Today we're going to make an ultra wideband impulse radar. Here is a uh, wideband 1 gigahertz band with a sampling scope that was built in the early 70s. And fortunately, I have the service manuals. Uh, it, the scope consists of a display portion and a uh, sampling uh, preamplifier head. And the interesting thing about this is that uh, there is a um, an impulse generator within that allows it to uh, sample at the wide bandwidth without using analog to digital uh, conversion. Fortunately, I have a spare um, <coughs> sample plugin. So if you see the front here, there's the two inputs, time domain, um, the uh, rather the uh, division, the horizontal axis. Time per division down to nanoseconds, sub nanoseconds, volts per division, so on and so forth. Um, if you look inside this thing, you start here, we have the inputs here, then we have a little couple off to these little gold plated chips here, which are uh, for the triggering mechanism. Then the input signal goes through two coaxial delay lines, which are inside this metal box right there. Uh, the triggering goes off to this board. This is the triggering sy system on this side here. Um, over here, after the coax delay lines, which I believe the purpose of which is to align the input with the trigger uh, subsystem, the, uh, the output of the coaxial delays goes here to the sampling heads. And the, these two boards are the sampling heads. Uh, there is a small... Um, mixer, a diode ring, basically like a frequency mixer right there and there for each channel. There's a small ballon that drives it. The ballon is driven by an impulse generator, which is underneath this board here. It's right underneath there. We'll get to that in a sec. And the output of this, uh, basically what amounts to a frequency mixer, is a uh, an integrator. And the rest of this is an integrator and amplification system. And so here are the two channels. This guy is the timing generator, and he drives the impulse generator that drives the frequency mixer or the multiplier right here. So we're going to lift this board up and look at the uh, impulse generator, and that's what we want. Now we're going to use this other working scope as the data acquisition. This guy will be used for the um, pulse uh, generation. Okay, so I've unscrewed the four nuts here, and we're going to lift this up. The, this card... This card comes off with, uh, very easily, it has these little finger tabs on the end there and little tabs there on this board, so it just pops out nice and easy for servicing. Now the interesting thing is in here, here's the, the pulse uh, generator, see if you can focus. Yeah, this is the pulse generator, so here is a step recovery diode right there and there are some decoupling capacitors, and so on and so forth. This has two output circuits. One feeds this, the uh, multiplier over here. The other feeds the multiplier over here via this motherboard. So let's take a look at the um, schematic for that. So over here is a photo of the, uh, the step recovery diode that we were looking at on the board itself right in the middle of these capacitors and resistors and so on and so forth. This is the schematic of that circuit. So there's the SRD. Uh, it's driven by uh, Q21 over here. So we should be able to hook up a pulse generator to this guy and get it to fire. Um, and actually, the waveform at point 8... Ah, here it is. This is great. This. <laughs> This manual even tells you the waveform you need to fire the SRD. So these pulses are on the order of... Um, that's interesting. They're about 10 microseconds wide, minus 21 to plus 14 volts. So 35 volt pulses um, are fed to this ballon, which then feeds this, the uh, sub recovery diode. And here's the output circuit here and, and uh, channel for channel B and channel A which go to the, uh, the sampling units, which go to the mixer or multiplier in each sampling unit. So what we're going to do is remove this board here, 
and hook up a pulse generator to that and then uh, look at the output of this on our on the um, wideband scope that's functioning over here. Alright, so I removed this board and <clears throat> you can see there's the uh, SEP recovery diode and on the bottom is the ballon that drives it exactly as we would expect in the schematic and there are two ballons to drive the uh, the frequency multiplier circuits which are on the sample heads over here. So the next thing we're going to do is um, we're going to drive this thing and I believe it will be these two terminals right here. I'll verify that on the schematic and we'll uh, see if it'll go. Okay, time to do a sandy check. Uh, make sure we don't hook this up incorrectly. We only have one of these things to work with. So if we look in the schematic, S is going to be the basically the pulse, the hot terminal, and H is ground. S is right there, and I don't see a label for H, but it's obvious that that's hooked to a ground plane. So this, on this side, this is going to be S, this is going to be H. <clears throat> Now, uh, the output for channel A and channel B are right here. So that is going to be, obviously it's output, one of them is right there, another output uh, is right here. And again, interestingly enough, the waveform that is needed is this um, my, uh, plus 14 to minus 21, 10 microsecond, <coughs> excuse me, pulses. So my pulse generator can't swing that kind of voltage, so uh, I'm going to try to see if it does anything. Uh, if not, I'll try, um, I'll try another pulse generator that I have.